We've moved buildings, and now we're moving the dyno. I'm Nick Pregnance with Calibrated Power, and on this Diesel Insights, we're going to talk about how dynos work. This monstrosity behind me is our MD500 all-wheel drive chassis dyno. It is a beast. It's designed to dyno four-wheel drive trucks under high load for long periods of time. It's a multiple roller front set, two rollers in the back, and three eddy brakes. In a minute, you're going to find out what all that means. The goal of any chassis dyno is to accurately and consistently measure power, regardless of the test. So you might be running a tow test at a constant 2,000 RPM. You might be running a spool-up test where you're testing for transient response. You might be running a power test where you're just looking for a sweep from 1,700 to 3,300 RPM to see if the truck gained power and torque over that curve. Regardless of that, you need to be able to do it accurately and consistently. And all the parts on this chassis dyno are designed for one of those two reasons. The basic math on horsepower is torque times RPM. So we need those two things. RPM comes from the tires. The tires spin a roll set. That roll set has a speed sensor on it that figures out how fast the roll set's spinning. Connected to the roll set is the brake. And the brake has a lever arm on it. Connected to that lever arm is a strain gauge. That strain gauge figures out the torque. Once we know the torque and the speed, we can converge on horsepower. And that tells you how much power the truck is making. Everybody wants to know the horsepower number. From there, we can back calculate the torque by knowing what RPM the engine's running at. Just remember, we need to know speed and we need to know force. If we know those two things, we know power. So let's talk about some of the features of this dyno and how those features are designed to more accurately and more consistently measure those two things. I'm on top of the front roll set. And this roll set is designed to take energy from the tire and transfer it to the dyno. A couple things you want to consider on the roll set. One is the knurling. We want to take all the energy that the tires are trying to put down and put it to the dyno. If the tires are slipping on the dyno, that's an issue. That wasted energy is not going to be measured. You're not going to be able to tell your friends about it. So we want to make sure we get those tires planted firmly on the dyno. Generally, the bigger the roller and the faster you're running the truck or the car, the better it's going to be at taking that power and putting it to the dyno. The second point I want to make about this roll set is that it's heavy. This one in particular is heavy. It's got seven rollers on it. That, that weight, that inertia, needs to be calculated for. So the engineers at Mustang understand what it takes to accelerate this roll set, and they factor that into the way that the dyno runs. Some dynos run on inertia alone. That is, they don't use a brake. This dyno has substantial inertia, and it also has a brake. The roll set is connected to the brake. The brake is right here. Now this isn't your standard drum brake or disc brake, it's an eddy brake. That is, it uses electricity to absorb energy. And when it does that, it makes heat just like any other brake. And it makes a lot of heat, especially if you're running high horsepower. So much heat, in fact, that they de they've designed veins that pull air in on the sides and kick air out. Oftentimes you'll see fans on dyno brakes. That keeps them <laughs> alive a lot longer, especially during steady state tests. Now, brakes are especially useful in steady state tests. And what that means is that you can run the vehicle against the brake on a steady state for a long period of time. This allows you to test the thermodynamics of the engine, understand how the towing capacity of the vehicle is. Anytime you want to simulate a road grade, the brake is going to come in. And that brake is going to absorb energy and try and kick it out. Now, the limitations on most dynos are the brakes. How long can you run at a certain power level before you overheat the brakes? Now this front brake doesn't look too bad. This dyno is about 10 years old, but our rear brakes show some bluing. They show some heat. What that means is that the dyno has gotten hot. The brakes have gotten hot, and the best way to fail an eddy brake dyno is to get the brakes really, really hot for a long period of time, and then you lo they lose their capacity. So that's the one thing you want to be aware of is how hot your brakes are, how long you're running your tests, how much power you're putting down. Most dynos are rated by how much horsepower they can absorb for a certain amount of time, that comes down to the brakes. All right, so we're on the back roll set now. First thing I want to draw your attention to is the speed sensor on the back roll set. Now, both the front and the back roll sets have speed sensors on this dyno because the front and the back rollers aren't connected. That's unusual. I'm not going to make a big stink about it. But this back roll set has a speed sensor. It's located right here. Here's the teeth, similar to a crank trigger ignition system. You got teeth and you got a pickup. As the teeth go past the pickup, the speed of the roll set is counted. This is important because it measures the speed of the dyno. Remember, we need to know the speed and the force to measure horsepower. Let's move on to force. This is the brake on the rear. This brake is connected to a torque arm. 
And as that brake absorbs energy, it creates a load on this arm. And that force of that load is measured by the strain gauge. The strain gauge is going to pick up torque. Remember, we have speed, and now we have torque. We can put those two things together and measure horsepower. Another thing I want to point your attention to is the uh, flywheel there. And that flywheel is there because if you don't have weight, if you don't have inertia on the system, you might hit the throttle and drive, and all of a sudden the wheels are going 60 miles an hour. What we want to have happen is, without the brakes on even, to save the brakes, we hit the throttle and it feels like you're in the vehicle. So vehicle, vehicle simulation is very important, and having inertia in the system is important to making that simulation work. Boiled down to basics, a dyno is really about measuring speed and measuring force. So why so many brands, why so many different dynos? It really boils down to features. Depends on what you're running, what vehicle, the length of the test, and how much power the vehicle is putting down. All those things can determine roll size, how many tie downs you need, how big of brakes you need, what kind of brakes you need. From there, we talk about instrumentation. Different tests are going to require different instrumentation. For example, on a diesel, you might need an opacity tester. You might need two sensors. You might need a big fan in front of the dyno. All these features, sensors, ancillary parts, really boil down to building a situation where we can simulate what happens on the road. We want to be able to consistently test the way the vehicle behaves on the road so we can intelligently talk about what it's going to do in those scenarios. I'm Nick Pregnance with Calibrated Power. Hope you enjoyed this rundown on how dynos work. Oh, 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 oh